This past week we've had Google's annual developer conference, Google I.O. Let's cover their key releases. So first up we have the announcement of the Pixel 7a. It's powered by the Tensor G2 and takes a crown from 6a for the best camera for $500 or less. They then discuss the Pixel tablet. So I was listening to this, I was dodging adjectives left and right like gorgeous, best, amazing. Without really getting many facts, there's an initial fact sheet here that I'll show you. But in short, it's an 11 inch HD tablet with quote unquote crisp sound audio. A premium aluminum enclosure. It also comes with a speaker dock, so you can put that on there when you're not using it. This dock then lets you turn it into a photo frame, into a smart home controller and a shared entertainment device. And also for all of this, you can switch between users, meaning that different people in the same house can have different accounts on the same tablet. They also claim to have the best voice recognition, which is three times faster than tapping. It also has Chromecast built in, which you know is well about time because Apple have AirDrop to share, so it would make sense that you can share between your Pixel and your Pixel tablet. It comes in three colors, it ships next month and a pre-order starts at $4.99. Next up, which is a biggie, is the Pixel Fold. So so this phone unfolds into a tablet, which is supposed to be the thinnest phone yet. Apparently though, this one has the best zoom on a foldable phone. It's a 7.6 inch display, unfolded, that then opens flat to a full 180. I'll show you a video here of all the features. And, and it's a subtle thing, but it makes the device feel so dynamic and alive. Now, the scenery is really beautiful, so I want to show you on the big screen. I just open my phone and the video ex instantly expands into this gorgeous full screen view. Then drag Google Messages to the side to enter split screen mode like so. Drag and drop from Google Photos right into my message like so. Well, here's the new split keyboard for faster typing. And if I pull down from the top, you'll notice the new two panel shade showing both my notifications and my quick settings at the same time. Now, look what happens when I fold the device at right angles. YouTube enters what we call tabletop mode so that the video plays on the top half and then we're working on adding playback controls to the bottom half. Pixel Fold has this new button on the bottom right, so I'm gonna tap this and it means I can move the viewfinder to the outside screen. So let me turn the device around. It means that the viewfinder is now beside the rear camera system. And so this phone starts at $1799, $1,799 and ships next month. So now into the cooler AI stuff. They have Gmail Help Me Write, which I must admit I think is a horrendous name for a product. Essentially what it does is you tell it to do something, to write something and it writes it out, kind of like ChatGPT. The example they give is you get a discount and you want a full refund and so it writes an email, which I think is genius because I spend way too much of my time doing these dumb admin tasks. The fact that I'll be like, oh, I'm going to use Gmail Help Me Write, it's like, no, maybe Gmail Write but Gmail help me write just makes it sound as if I'm not good enough to write it myself. I'll let my child learning to write. The next thing they show is the immersive maps, which is really cool. So basically you can see a journey of where you're gonna go. And it also can predict the weather, using the weather and show that graphically as well, which you know is pretty cool, but I've thought for years now, why don't they already have like a street view version? Then next up, another one with a horrendous name, Magic Editor. I don't know where they get this stuff. It's genius. So for this, what it does is it can recreate pictures which are out of frame, which is pretty cool. The example here is it's like a child with balloons, which could be cool if it was your child and you were out and you took a picture and you cut half them off and it shows them. But then they're like, and then you can make the sky blue. You can then color correct everything. And it just becomes weird because it just feels very inauthentic. Like I did have a bit of quibbles with like the magic eraser. <laughs> just felt very Stalin to me. But then to have this like, you can now erase things from your picture. If that's not all, you can add things that weren't there. And if that's not good enough, you can just change stuff like, you know, was it raining that day? And then they go and talk about Bard and Palm 2, which you can see in another video linked below. And it's just so funny here. It just seems so dystopian. It's like a background that was made from like Animal Crossing or something, right? I know it's a developer's conference, but you look out and it's all just like, you know, your developer types with the hoodies and the flat caps and stuff. And someone's standing there like this at the top, just giving given the very good explanation of the best things that they provide. And one of the things is they're like, hello developers, we have created code which writes the code for you. None of you are going to be needed shortly. 
everyone's like, wow, that's amazing. They then touch on Workspace, which is kind of like their AI assistant for the suite. So it can help with things like text, like in your Word docs. It can help with sheets, like making a Google Sheet. They then go on this spiel about making a new protocol for messaging. Well, as anyone who uses Apple knows, when you get a message from someone who uses Android, it's a nightmare, it's ugly, right? So they've made a new protocol to try and get rid of this Apple mode. They're basically trying to say, let's all be happy friends and hold hands and cuddle and we'll all use the same protocol. But it feels like they don't get the point that Apple, it's their USP. It's like digitally wearing the logo and that's the point of it. But I do understand the security and all that stuff as well, which is good and the fact you'll be able to send videos and you know emojis and stuff. But I'll let you watch the clip. We hope every mobile operating system gets the message and adopts RCS so we can all hang out in the group chat together no matter what device we're using. They then have Magic Compose which helps you stylize your messages so you can do it like in the specific tone of voice of someone else or whether you're happy or sad and then they talk about wallpapers so you can do emoji wallpapers whoa so cool it's so grunge and then cinematic wallpapers which is pretty cool it turns a photo into three dimensional so you can move your phone and it moves about and then also they have a creative wallpaper which is essentially the same thing I was talking about with Bard where it generates a picture from words they have that so you can generate wallpaper back from words. So that's the main releases from Google I.O. Excluding Palm because I have a separate video all about Palm which you can see linked below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you next time and we'll find out what's going on in tech.